In this video net interview, I'm speaking with Mike Darcy, Chief Operating Officer at B Sky B. Hi, Mike. Good morning. Um, do you think that the free advertiser funded TV model is still viable? I think it's viable at a, at a certain level, but I, I, I tend to think its best days are probably behind it. Uh, look, I, I still think the free model is going to produce some great shows, you know, some, big, some big event television. But I think the overall revenue opportunity from, from free-to-air television looks stagnant, stagnant at best uh, and probably declining, certainly in real terms. Uh, when you combine that with sort of increasing costs, you see just the money available to fund good new content looks like it gets squeezed. So I think it just gently gets smaller. And I think at the same time, the revenue model over in pay television is growing strongly. And I think you'll see the pay the pay business invest more in content and those two things will sort of feed each other. Um, so it's viable but perhaps not at the level it was in the past. Yeah, you mentioned cost there, I mean HD obviously introduced a big cost that everybody had to swallow <coughs> and it seems that it has been hard to monetize with advertising alone. I mean does 3D TV, is it likely to follow the same pattern? I think it is a similar story, I think, I think HD was always challenging for the free-to-air community, both in terms of the production costs of the, of the shows themselves, um, but also the transmission costs um, re requiring extra bandwidth. Uh, and what that means is it wasn't really adding any viewers, uh, no advertiser was looking to pay more to insert an ad into an HD channel, so there was just no more money and, and more costs. So that looks pretty challenging. So what they've done is the most important channels, they've, they've swallowed the cost of putting them out in HD. But actually their second tier channels, when they've looked to make those available in HD, they've actually tended to want to exploit those in a pay world. So Sky's done deals with several of the commercial free to air broadcasters in which their HD channels are pay channels because that's the only way they can make it add up. I think 3D is a roughly similar story. There will be additional costs, both at the production level and in the transmission level. Uh, and it's hard to see what the additional revenue stream is for them. So I, I, I tend to think it follows roughly the same path. I mean, can you say what those additional production costs are likely to be, having done some 3D yourselves, obviously? I think it's a, probably a little bit early uh, to draw conclusions on that. Um, I think it, you know, it, is, it is costing more at the moment. Um, but you know it is very early days and we're all running around buying equipment and, and so we're in the very early days of, of bearing those costs. I think what will happen is we all get a bit better at it uh, and, we, and, we, and we do more. Um, those costs as a, as a proportion of the, of the base cost will, will come down. But I don't think they disappear. Okay. Um, so I think there are, there are non-trivial uh, extra layer of cost. And then of course there is the cost of transmission as well. So is it fair to assume that uh, pay TV is the natural home of 3D? I think that's right, for the same reason as, as HD, that, that pay television provides the natural model to, to, to cover those additional costs. And what about online? I mean, there was a mood at the beginning that that should be free, and Sky bucked the trend to an extent with Sky Player. And now people seem to be talking about online content being paid for as well. I mean, do you think the future is paid online as well? I think so. Well, we, we started putting content online in about 2006, 2007, and our, and our view then was that the, the main opportunity was to put our content online and make it available to our existing subscribers. So it was an authenticated model, an existing customer, satellite customer, would, would, would authenticate that they were a paying customer, and they therefore had access to all of our content online. And we always felt that the, the opportunity there was about adding value to this core subscription. And that's, that's the way we've driven that. And yes, we've watched various other people throw content online and it, all, it was all going to be free. And I think what you've just seen is that early naivety has been confronted by the icy wind of commercial reality. <laughs> uh, and it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't generate very much revenue if you just put it out there and it potentially cannibalizes your existing revenue, I and mean, it just looks like a very, very bad idea. So we sort of feel like uh, yeah, yeah, the world is sort of moving. Okay, well, pay TV has obviously innovated from the birth of digital right through DVR and now onto 3D TV. I mean, what comes next, if it's not too premature to ask that, given that you're still rolling out HD right now, and 3D right now? It does, does feel a little premature. You guys are very impatient. Um, 
uh, yeah, HD as a story is, is, you know, starting to mature, I suppose. We launched four years ago. Uh, and we've grown that proposition pretty strongly. You know, we started with a handful of channels and we're heading towards 50 channels by Christmas. Uh, we're fairly confident we'll hit that. And we're at around 3 million customers, so I think there's quite a lot to just continue to expand that proposition and roll that uh, into the base. 3D, gosh, we've barely even started. Uh, we launched a service in the pub sector earlier this year. Uh, and in three weeks' time, uh, on the 1st of October, we'll launch our first residential 3D channel. We'll be teeing off with uh, Golf's Ryder Cup. Uh, and that'll be just one channel on day one, and it'll be a mixture of uh, sport and movies and documentaries and the arts. Uh, and so I think you know there's quite a lot to do in terms of expanding that proposition through time and selling that into the base. So I think uh, you know those two things will keep us pretty occupied. The next thing that's on the horizon for us or in, in, the, in the near term is connecting our set-top box to our broadband pipe. Uh, and in order to deliver a VOD service to our customers. That's coming very shortly. Uh, and then I think the next general area, area simply flows from the fact that the, the set-top box becomes broadband connected. And I think that opens up a number of possibilities, some interesting questions about what else you might do now that you are broadband connected. And I think that's going to be a general area of exploration, but I probably won't be more specific than that for now. Maybe that's one for IBC 2011. Yeah, yeah, maybe next year. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time, Mike. Good speaking to you. Pleasure.